If you've ever been interested in any type of spherification, you need to know which types of calcium salts to use. Well, today here on WTF, we're going to cover all the calcium salts and how to use them in spherification and more. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, the owner of Modernist Pantry. Today, Scott and I are going to be talking all about calcium salts, which you may have already heard of, used commonly in spherification. So today, we're going to go over that, but we're also going to cover some other really cool uses of different types of calcium salts. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have demos, recipes, and also give you some cool references to look at in case you're interested in how else can I use them. So let's get right into it, Scott. What are the three different types of calcium salts that people use? So the three different types that we use are calcium chloride, calcium lactate, and calcium lactate gluconate. Okay, and what's the main difference? So the main difference is calcium chloride has a, a bitter flavor, and calcium lactate and calcium lactate gluconate don't have a flavor. They're basically neutral. Okay, and uh, I think, you know, without going too deep into spherification today, which I'm sure we'll do later on, um, most commonly people know oh, there's two different types of spherification, so direct and reverse. Mm -hmm. Which one is used in which instances? So calcium chloride is going to be used in direct spherification. Um, it's going to be used so it sets the gel really you know, nice and hard on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, not hard, but a, a nice firm gel on the outside, but you need to rinse it off. You need to make sure you rinse it off. Okay. Um, in reverse spherification, you actually add the calcium to your flavorful liquid, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't want to be adding something that is bitter to that flavorful liquid uh, right. for flavor purposes. Yeah, and I know one of the common questions that we get is that because there's a lot of different recipes out there, some of them will call for calcium lactate for reverse, and some of them will call for calcium lactate gluconate for reverse, mm -hmm. and people will write in and ask us, are these interchangeable? If I only have one, how do I substitute them for the other one? What do you, what's your advice on that? So it's actually really simple. It seems difficult because they are you know, two different names for uh, a similar product. Mm -hmm. You can interchange them. That is totally fine. You just need calcium in that liquid. Mm -hmm. It will start to gel if there is calcium present in that liquid. Uh, the biggest difference between the two is calcium lactate, while it doesn't have a flavor, it does have calcium properties to, you know, if you add it to something, you can feel it in your mouth a little bit. Mm -hmm. Calcium lactate gluconate is nearly undetectable. Okay, and I know in spherification we always recommend that people you know, use a gram scale, 0.1 gram scale, mm -hmm. that they want to be really, really precise. If they're interchangeable, um, what's the, I, I guess, what is the, the rationale or the reasoning behind that, maintaining that level of precision? Uh, for using a scale, especially with these, is just to make sure that your, cal your water or your flavorful liquid has enough calcium in okay. it to uh, you know, create the gel. Mm -hmm. So that's all you really need to worry about there is just making sure that there's calcium in it. They may differ in percentages of calcium between the two, but it's not enough to make a difference when you're actually doing the, the gelling process. Okay, great. And, um, you know, if people are interested in learning more about spherification, mm -hmm. I know that we're working on something that's pretty exciting, yes. soon to be announced. Do you want to kind of give a little teaser about what we're doing? Sure, we're actually going to be we're going to be doing a, uh, a demo of one of the recipes for our Kitchen Alchemist Notebook, mm -hmm. which is a little booklet that we're coming out with. Um, you know, we're going to be releasing it in chapters. Yeah, and it's going to cover like all types of cool techniques. So yes. we're going to have start with spherification, and um, we're going to have cover like what else? Do, what else have we are we working on you right know, now? Spherification. The second one is going to be frying, uh, then uh, gelatin, and then. Uh, so on and so forth. Yeah, so if you want to be one of the first people to be notified about the Kitchen Alchemist Notebook, go to our blog, the link is in the description, and uh, sign up for our newsletter. So that's the best way to know all the cool, new, exciting stuff that we come up with. Great. Yeah. So I'm going to get one thing started because I need to, and it's actually going to be our reverse spherification for today. Okay. And it's a sphere within a sphere, or a lot of tiny spheres within a sphere. It's a pickled mustard seed sphere Ooh. that's going to be going on our uh, chicken liver pate that we're going to be plating in just a little bit. But I need to get it in because it's going to take a few minutes to create that nice gel on the outside. Okay. So I'm going to take it, and they're frozen right now. So I just pop it out of the liquid, and then right down into the sodium alginate bath. So there's calcium within the, uh, the pickled mustard seeds themselves, mm -hmm. 
and then I put them into a sodium alginate bath. And when they react with each other, it actually gels the sodium alginate. So okay. Sodium alginate pulls out these little polymers of uh, calcium and creates a network that makes a nice gel. That's why you get those perfect little spheres. Mm -hmm. And I know that we always advise people, if you're doing direct, you need to rinse them off, not just for the flavor, but to stop the spherification process. Mm -hmm. But in the reverse, we don't. We, we, we do rinse them off, but you don't need to. Okay. Uh, the only reason we would rinse them off is just to get any excess liquid so, uh, sodium alginate that's on the outside. We just want to you know, get a little bit of it off there before we place it on the plate. Okay. And once people have made the mustard seed sphere, how long can they keep it for? So if you make the sphere itself, if you put it into a nice flavorful liquid or some, some neutral oil, uh, it'll actually last for you know, seven days, if not more. If you put it just into water, it's going to pull in some of that water and release a lot of its flavor and it'll become you know, watered down. So we definitely suggest putting it into some flavorful liquid. The, li the liquid that it was made of you know, uh, has calcium in it, so it's totally fine. It'll keep that you know, sodium alginate really nice. Yeah, and, and if you're new to spherification, and you might have heard of two different types of spherification, one being what we're doing here today is the sodium alginate plus a calcium salt, mm -hmm. and then there's another type called agar spherification. Yeah. So if someone's like confused about the differences and how to do them, do you have any advice for them about you know where to get that resource? Well, of course. So uh, <laughs> and w with anything that we reference here, there will be a, a link in the description below. But we have uh, articles that we post on our blog. Uh, mm -hmm. They're called Ask a Chef. So people write in and they ask questions, and and I tend to answer them and write uh, you know a little blog about it. Mm -hmm. And this one is uh, the difference between those two. You know, spherification, either direct or reverse, versus cold oil spherification. Okay. So uh, also known as agar spherification in some circles. So uh, there is a big difference between the two. We actually did it in a recent episode here mm -hmm. on WTF, um, but link will be in the description below. Okay. All right. Yeah. So go on the blog and you can just type in spherification in the search bar. You'll probably see that, Ask a Chef. Yes. And plus uh, all the other recipes up there. Right. Okay. So what let's get into a little demo. Yay. All right. So, you know, uh, it, it's morning here, but it's never too early for a cocktail, Janie. Nope. Uh, and <laughs> what we're going to do here is we're going to make a nice little um, uh, edible cocktail. Mm -hmm. So it works really well. And we have a lime flavorful liquid that I added sodium alginate to. And I'll lift this up so you can see just the, the liquid here. Mm -hmm. And it's a very powerful, you know, strong lime flavor. And here I have some calcium chloride that is added to a bit of water. And I'm gonna take it, and I use the rapid caviar maker here. And I will just begin to drip these into the water. And you can see that they turn into spheres immediately. Mm -hmm. Nice, beautiful little green spheres. And I need to give those about 30 seconds or so. I'm actually gonna do a little bit more just because it's fun. And the rabbits can make 96 drops at a time, yes. so you could just make them one at a time with just a caviar maker. Um, but if you're trying to do them quickly or serve a lot of people, of we recommend the rapid. Yeah, it, that's, it, it's so much easier to make, you know, I probably made between 96 to a, just a, around 200 with what I just did. Mm -hmm. If I were to do that by hand, it's going to take a lot more time. Yeah. So I have some fresh water here to rinse them off, right? We need to get that calcium out of there. Uh, over here I have a little bit of ginger beer gel that mm -hmm. I made, so I really fortified it with ginger. Mm -hmm. And then I took it, I cut the gel into little cubes, I put them into a whipping siphon with CO2. Okay. So I carbonated this gel. Ooh. So you get the, the texture of the carbonation mm -hmm. in a gel. So you can't see it right now. If you listen really closely, you can hear a little popping coming from it. It doesn't blow the gel out. So what I'm going to do, is so I'll just show you. So I'll get a little bit of the gel. I'm going to put it down onto a nice decorative like serving spoon. Then I have just a bit of sorbet that is ginger beer, lime. It's all the flavors kind of of a uh, of a Moscow mule. I was about to say it's an edible yep. mule. I was going to just just get to it, and I'm just going to put a nice little canal on top. Mm. And then we have these beautiful spheres. Just want to use the spherification spoon. And as you see, I used a copper spherification spoon because it's a Moscow mule and that's what they're served in, right? There you go. And this already looks very refreshing, like yes. a great palate cleanser or summer. Oh, looks right. great. And the, if anyone's asking, where's the alcohol? It's actually in the sorbet itself. 
So there's a little bit of vodka in the sorbet. We have these beautiful lime spheres that we made. That looks great. All right. You just set them right over the top. Garnish with a little sprig of mint. And there we go. We have a beautiful little uh, palate cleanser or edible cocktail that you can serve at cocktail parties. And Janie, if you want to, yeah. it may be a big bite, but it is. I would, uh, I would <laughs> say but just go, you know go for it. I'm going to go nuts with it. While you do that, I'll set up for our next demo. Sounds good. Give us your thoughts while you eat it, too. Mm, it's really nice. It tastes exactly like a Moscow Mule. And do you get that carbonation coming through? I do. It's surprising, right? It is. And I really love to sorbet with it, too. So everything goes together really, really well. Yes. Mm. Nicely done. Thank you. All right. All right. Excited to see what else is coming up on the plate here. Great. So I just add a little bit of the clean water here. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next one that we have is actually out of our Kitchen Alchemist Notebook um, spherification version. Mm -hmm. So I have a nice clean plate here and then I have different accompaniments for a chicken liver pate. Mm. So I have a Parmesan crisp, I have a pickled egg yolk that's you know, pickled in beets. I have some gherkins and, uh, and pickled onions. I have uh, uh, mustard caramel and then I have our beautiful mustard seed sphere. So I'm gonna build it on the plate. So I have our mustard caramel which is a nice kind of savory caramel. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get the flavor of a caramel, but also a little bit of bitterness and that acidity that you would get from mustard. So let me just, just a little bit, because it is sweet, so we don't need too much. Mm. And I personally love chicken liver pâtés. Yes. I think people are divided on them, but no, I, I think love it. great. So just enough on there. It'll settle and it'll make a nice, perfect little uh, circle. Then I get my chicken liver pate. Beautiful. I'm just going to place that right in the center. Nice and soft. Then I have one Parmesan crisp I'm going to place right on top. So we try to build this up like a nice stack. Then I have our pickled egg yolk, so you know, a nice rich pickled egg yolk which mimics the sphere that we're going to eventually put on top. I have another Parmesan crisp. Just press down slightly. Now our sphere, the sphere that we made earlier. I'm just going to swirl this water until the sphere releases. And that's because it's frozen, right? So it's kind of yes, wants so to hear exactly. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. The sphere was frozen. So when I put it in there, it needs to uh, thaw out, and as it thaws out, it creates that gel. Mm -hmm. uh, if I were to do this without, actually, it looks gorgeous. Um, if I was to do it without, you know, uh, freezing it, I could. It's just a little difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't want all those mustard seeds to fall out. Exactly, exactly. So we have this beautiful mustard seed sphere, I'm going to place right on top. I love how that looks because it really, like all those little mustard seeds are just perfectly suspended yep. in there. Just make sure. There we go. I'm just going to garnish. This is definitely an advanced plating technique. Yes, this is for, one of the advanced for recipes. For balancing. And that's a good, good thing to point out is we have beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So mm -hmm. for all these recipes, for all these techniques that we're showing off, we're going to have three different, um, you know, ways to do them. We can start with the beginner one for people who are, are maybe just starting to try it out and they want, really want to test their, their skills. And then once they figure out, oh, that's not too bad, there's more advanced recipes and more advanced recipes so people can you know, level up their cooking. Yeah, and so what we're going to make available on the blog right after this episode is going to be the recipe for the mustard seed spheres. Yep. So in order, but we do have this entire recipe written up and if you want to get the whole thing, Go onto the link in the description and sign up for our newsletter because that's how you're going to find out uh, when the Kitchen Alchemist notebook it will be available. And that's where you're going to get the liver pate, the pickle egg yolks, basically this whole thing, plus many, many more. So we're really excited about it. Yep. 
And uh, just quickly, we, there's still more things you can do with these calcium salts. All right, what else can we do with the calcium salts? <laughs> so, so a little call back is we have two recipes already that contain calcium that we've done in prior episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, in episode 114, our pectin episode, we showed off our bacon jam. Yes, which, uh, is, which is, right is right there. here, right? Yep. Okay. So it, it's a very savory bacon jam. And the reason it works is because we use LM pectin and we, um, oh, <laughs> nice firm bacon jam. I was gonna eat it. <laughs> you can yeah, eat I it if you'd it. like. I'll eat so, some of it. So <laughs> it is a nice um, savory bacon jam because we use LM pectin and we- uh, mm. Oh, good. <laughs> Not bacon, sorry. And the LM pectin needs calcium to gel. It's not like HM pectin or, or traditional yellow pectin, apple pectin that people use. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can learn all about it, you know, in uh, link in the description below. Go to the pectin episode and check it out there. Mm -hmm. And we also use calcium chloride just a little bit as a crisping bath before we make a natural ferment pickle because what it does is it helps keep those vegetables nice and crisp. And as you can see the color on those pickles, that's about a week of pickling. They're still nice, bright white, mm -hmm. they're crisp, and uh, it makes for a really beautiful pickle. Yeah, and if you're interested in learning more about fermentation in general, you can check out our episode number 112. The link is in the description below, and you'll be able to get you know all about this cool little Sterilock lid, which we will not yes. be covering today, um, but you can learn all about that in the fermentation episode as well. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think what the cool thing about, you know, these calcium salts is that sometimes people think that they're very single purpose, yep. but hopefully what you've seen today is that you can do a lot of different types of spherification, but also be able to utilize them and uh, start utilizing them in other dishes as well, where mm -hmm. just, you can just add calcium and get some benefits yes, with it. Of course. Yeah. Right. Is there anything else we want to leave the folks with today? No, I think we covered quite a bit about calcium. All right. Well, sounds good. As always, the Links are in the description. You can go onto our blog, get all the recipes, and uh, watch all the other episodes. Right. And we will see you next week. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. And if you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. <laughs>